morning or hello to everyone. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for attending our virtual event. Um, it's actually really quick, only 30 minutes. And I am going to introduce you officially to our, uh, actually our 2021 convention keynote speaker. Um, this is Chris Westfall. He has worked with thousands of franchisees and entrepreneurs on four continents with innovative new strategies on leadership and communication. Um, as a regular contributor to Forbes, he has helped launch over 60 businesses while raising over $100 million in capital investment. His clients have appeared on TV shows like Shark Tank, Dragon's Den in Canada, and Shark Tank Australia. He's recognized as the U.S. National Elevator Pitch Champion, and he has appeared on ABC News, CNN, and NBC TV, as well as dozens of other media outlets. He published seven books. His latest is called Leadership Language, and Chris is here to help you elevate the conversation, because in this business, whoever tells the best story wins. He's originally from Chicago and now lives in Houston with his wife and two daughters and is an avid supporter of the performing and visual arts. So welcome, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for that introduction, Aaron. It is a pleasure and it is an honor. I want to say hello to everyone who's watching us live as well as everyone who is watching this later via the recording and everyone who attends today will receive a copy of the recording. So I want to let everyone know that. And today's conversation, and it is a conversation, is going to be interactive, if, if you'll allow it to be. And I know this format can be a little bit strange, but you've, you've used the chat window. I know that we've got, now we've got some folks from Pleasanton, California who have joined us. You can go ahead and I, I want you to get comfortable with using the chat window so that you can share your responses. And I'll tell you why, because, because I want to hear from you. You know, when, when I sat down with Patrick and Aaron and, to talk about this event and the other members of the leadership team, it, it really made me smile. And, and I'll tell you why. Because our, our conversation pointed me in, in the direction of the similarities between our businesses. Because like you, I, I'm an entrepreneur. I own my own business too. And, and I've learned that, that a smile is actually the, the least expensive and probably most impactful customer service tool that I've ever discovered. And, and I'll tell you why. Because when, when people meet with me, just like when they come into your location, whether it's commercial or retail, when people contact you, they come in via the website, whatever the case may be, they want to get an experience of who you are. Am I right? I mean, if you think about it, we, we offer services, we offer products, but what people are looking for are experiences. And, and as I was talking with Aaron and the team in San Diego, I, I was thinking about some, some ideas for what we might talk about. And, and I was sharing with the team, I said, you know, we can, we can start by looking, looking at information, right? I can give you more information, but then I thought, well, you, you know, you have the 360 emails, you have so much information that's coming out from, from corporate, I mean, and, and, and you've got your own experience, right? But information is really um, a, more of like a how to, wouldn't you agree? And I, I thought, is there something more powerful than a how to that we could talk about in these 30 minutes? I mean, what, what could we discuss that would be of greatest value to you to help grow your business? And I started looking in this direction in the direction of service, service. And this looks in the direction, not just how to, but also want to. Do you wanna create an experience for your customers? That's something they can't get anywhere else. Something that separates you from the competition. Something that makes your location stand out in a powerful way. If you're interested in doing that, I've got three ideas, three simple, straightforward ideas that I'm going to share with you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go to a different camera right now. And I, and I want to ask you, I want to ask you to think about your business and what makes you special, you as a business owner, but also your location. And by the way, if you're watching us on the recording and you aren't able to be with us live, play along. I want you to answer these questions as well. So let me come over here to my second camera and, and take a look. Take a look at this. Here's what I want to ask all of you, okay? I want you to, if, if you're willing to do this, 
take out a sheet of paper or maybe open a Google Doc or whatever you'd like to do, but I need you to create three columns. Would you be willing to do that? Well, I mean, it's just something to help you to look in a, in a new direction. And you can see on the, on the first column, I want you to write down the word strengths. And I want you to think about what are your greatest strengths. And if you're willing, drop them in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on it right here. And so is Aaron. So what would you say are your greatest strengths? I'm keeping an eye on the chat. So you can go ahead and you can enter them in, in there anytime you're ready. You know, sometimes when I, when I do this exercise with, with franchise owners, what they say is that their strengths. Yeah. Here, and here's, here's Steve coming in right up top. And this is one that he, that he points out customer service, right? How many of you would say that customer service is your strength? Let's see what else we've got. Let's see. And when Patrick says strengths is a person or as a business, well, Patrick, uh, today is plan your own adventure day. So you can choose either your own personal strengths. What makes you a, a powerful and effective leader? Or what is it that makes your business effective? Is it, is it the guys that are working for you? Is it the team that's packing the, that's, that stuff there on Britmore Road? Or, or is it your integrity, your work ethic? What, what do you see? Let's see. Oh, we've got somebody here that's adding, and uh, I'm sorry, a DUT. I'm going to spot your name, and I apologize, but, apologize, but it's confidence. Let's see. Confidence. I love it. We've got communication coming in. Let me see. What else? What else do you see out there? That... Somebody says, my smile. Didn't I already, I, I thought I, that was my strength too. Okay, customer service orientation, absolutely. Let's see, what else do we have in here? Customized solutions, and Pete says, good listener. Excellent, this is a great list, and we can go on. And again, if you're watching this from home, I hope that you are. Think about four to five strengths, things that differentiate you as a leader and you as a business in your marketplace. Now, let me ask you about column number two. Can we go to column number two? This one's a little bit more tricky. Column number two asks, what is your method of delivery? Now think about that for a second. How do you deliver your strengths? I mean, if you have confidence, how do you deliver that? How do you deliver, and a lot of folks hit on customer service. I mean, what stands out to you as the number one way that you deliver your strength? And then I'm gonna write it down here. This is delivery. How do you deliver on your strengths. Let's see, ooh, Andy says, I got a great looking estimate format. Now, Steve says knowledge. How do you deliver, Steve, how do you deliver that knowledge, right? What, what, do you, what do you do, right? Because here's the thing, if this column, if you look at it, it's kind of, it's, it's like con concepts, right? Conceptual, these are, these are some things that, that we all understand and we have to get conceptual, but I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm a practical guy. And, and concepts are good to get it started. But what I want to know is, is where does the rubber meet the road? And, and here, the method of delivery is some folks are saying, I educate my customers. Can you see this okay? My handwriting's a little, little crazy today. You know, you could even say that communication could be the way that you deliver your value. And I want to add that expert presentations uh, or I'm, I'm reading it wrong. Expert da, 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 da. estimates. Yes. That excellent estimate format. And thank you for that, Andy. I appreciate you sharing that. But the expert estimate format. Let's see. Patrick says safe, undamaged cargo on time. And the way, so get this, the way they deliver is on time. Absolutely. That is what matters. Okay. And now let me shift gears if I can. This is great. And again, if you're watching this on the recording, I hope you're coming up with a couple of methods of delivery. Now let's go to column number three. And column number three asks you to shift gears. Put yourself in the customer's perspective. Go to the other side of the table, the desk, the counter, <laughs> and ask yourself this question. How is your customer better off? Right? And, and think about it. Think about it like this. Because of your strengths, because of your method of delivery, how is your customer better off? What is it that they see, that they receive, that is the outcome that they come away with? Brett Rushton, 
right at the top of the list. Congratulations. Here's what he says and see if this shows up for you. Are you ready? Peace of mind. Let me get my microphone out of the way so you can see. Can you see it? Peace of mind. Really powerful. And this is, you got safe, on time delivery, safety, no issues, which is also a part of peace of mind, right? And when things get there on time, your customers are able to grow their business. You're able to enable their growth via your service. So when you think about it, from these three columns, your greatest strengths, your method of delivery, and then how is your customer better off from your customer's perspective, from your customer's perspective, which of these three columns would you say is most important? What would you say? I'm keeping an eye on the chat. What have you got? See, it's right here. Ultimately, what every customer is interested in is their business and the service that you provide. The service that's going to make a difference is the one that is focused on the customer. So let's, let's focus there. And, and by the way, I'm not saying that you're not focused on your customer, but if we focus on the customer in new ways, we can create new results. Makes sense? So let me, let me drop out of this for just a second. I'll come back to my camera and I want to share some thoughts with you via a, a PowerPoint. So let me, let me go over here to my PowerPoint and take a look at it real quick. And, and thank you, everybody. Thank you for your input and your participation. And as we look at what can make a difference for your location by making a difference for your customer. Inside your customer's world, is frustration. Right now, most of your customers, especially your retail customers, are working from home. And this book here that you see on the screen is written uh, by Karen Manja. She's a, a friend of mine and a, a coaching client, a consulting client. We've worked together and, and I had the pleasure of working with her on this book. And as I went through seeing what people are going through, I gained a new perspective into your customer set, a perspective that, that you can share. And I shared it just yesterday, just yesterday. This is actually a screenshot from the article that I created talking about the mental health issues that people are experiencing working from home. Look, it, it's no secret that this pandemic is tough, that, that it has put added stress on your customers. But what that means is, is that in the midst of added stress, they're looking for added solutions and added value. So inside your customer's world, let's really take a look at what's going on. According to Forbes, the customer's day is longer. People who are working from home, the day is actually on average an hour longer. I wrote about that in the article. Uh, it's a joint survey that was done by NYU and Harvard. That doesn't matter. But what does is the fact that the days are longer. People are experiencing more meetings. They're experiencing Zoom fatigue. And so that means that when they come into your retail locations, you might find them looking for a break. Think about the IT guy. Think about the IT guy who used to be able to go down to the corporate mail room to mail things out, to mail out those laptops that he just configured for some hotshot new employee that's going to be joining the organization. Well, where is he going to go right now? You see, he's going to go to you. And I'll tell you why. Because you are the new mailroom. And, and think about it on the commercial side. Think about the artist and the gallery owner. Think about how they are looking to, to grow their business. Even during a time of isolation, they're looking for connection, connection with their customers that have, that have ordered unusual sculptures, unusually shaped objects, or objects of, that, are, that are paintings that are worth a great deal of money. You know what I'm talking about. You do this stuff every day, but understanding where folks are coming from is key to your success. I mean, when you think about it, when you think about it, in general terms, ask yourself this question, in general terms, which do you prefer? Do you prefer something that is new or do you prefer something that is known? Something that is new or something that is known? 
It's a fact of human nature that depending on the circumstances, we like what's new and we like what's known. But if we're going to get to something new, which by the way, if you're looking for net new revenues, new business, new prospects, new customers, new clients, getting to something new starts with what is known. What is it that you know about your customers that could help them to get to something new? You see, there's one thing that you've got to understand, and, and it's the challenge of our times. The challenge of our times, and, and by providing it to your customers, you can take the first step, the first step towards accessing new growth. And here it is, adapt. How have you adapted to this new normal? I don't know people, people hate those, those words, but, but there's no other way to describe it. What is it that you are doing to help your customers to adapt and, and making them aware of the changes that you have made by looking in the direction of greater service, expanding your ideas around service and making sure that, that you are always fighting to win. I mean, picture this, a fighter in the ring up against the ropes going seven rounds, seven rounds in a championship bout. And he has been blocking every shot he possibly can and, and, and leaning up against the ropes. And it's the seventh round and he's worn out. He's beat down. He's beat down like folks who are working from home, like folks who are trying to find their way through this pandemic. And in the middle of the seventh round, as he is taking blow after blow after blow, he grabs hold of the other fighter, grabs him by the neck and he leans in. And this is what he says. Is that all you've got? Is that all you've got? And in the eighth round, he comes out swinging. Of course, I'm telling you the story of how Muhammad Ali defeated George Foreman. That's right. This was the famous rope-a-dope that, that Muhammad Ali used. And he knew that he had more to give. Sure, he had taken some body blows. You feel that? I know I do. My business has been impacted too. I'm an entrepreneur just like you. But guess what? The conversation changes when you're able to come out swinging and you realize that we've all got to give this message to 2020. Is that all you've got? You're not done. You're not out of ideas because there's no quarantine on good ideas. And so let's take ownership of new opportunity by recognizing the two most dangerous words. In fact, these two words represent the biggest enemy of every business that is on this, including my business. Check it out, see if you don't agree. Don't know. If customers don't know what you can do for them, if customers don't know when you're open and who you serve and how your location is making a difference and how you are distinct because of your strengths, because of your method of delivery, because of how your customers are better off. If people don't know, how can you win? You're still gonna be back up against the ropes. And so that points us towards the second objective. The second key to your growth, and again, a shout out to, to my friends up there in Jersey Village here in Houston. That's right, that's one of their trucks. But the objective number two is access. That's what people want right now. They can't access their offices for the most part. Maybe they're doing a hybrid model. They're trying to access ways to help their fifth grader doing homework and math and that kind of thing. And, and you know, how can you make sure that you are that point of access for what they need. You see, that point of access is where we have to discover new things. And that means looking away from the seven most dangerous words for any franchise owner. Every one of your locations battles these seven words. Do you know what they are? Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them on the screen. Take a look, see if you don't agree. That's the way we've always done things. Yeah. You know, innovation doesn't come from what you already know. And the folks who are on this call who are making headway 
and finding new opportunities in the midst of a pandemic are the ones who are innovating who are seeing new ways of doing things. They're not clinging to the past. And I just wonder, is that you? Do you ever find yourself getting stuck in a rut and saying, today feels like yesterday, feels like the week before? What is it that you can do to break things up, to see things in a new way? Who is it that you are strategizing with? You know, I, I do a ton of writing in my business. And I'll tell you, one of the most important people in my life is my writing coach. Yeah, that's right. I have a writing coach. And you may say, hey, Chris, you write books all the time, I'm writing for Forbes. Why do you need a writing coach? And the answer is, the answer is, because I want to win. I want to be good. I want to make a difference. My business depends on it. Who's in your corner? Who's giving you that additional perspective? Because sometimes what, what you need is someone that, that's just riding shotgun, that sees something that, that you don't, that's looking at your blind spot. What is it that you can do to make a change, not just for change's sake, but looking in the direction of service? How can you show that you're ready to adapt? And how can you give your customers the access that's going to give them the ability to tap into your strengths? Because that access and your adaptability, those two fundamental principles are key to your growth, but there's still one more, one more coming. When you think about safety concerns, and, and some of you may be, may be facing that with, with employees, and I, I know it's difficult to, to find folks, it's difficult to keep folks. I, I understand, I get it. But when it comes to addressing safety and confidence, what you're really, what you're really looking at is what is the experience? What is the experience of doing business with you? And, and how can you give folks a, a taste of that experience and give them that, that antidote, if you will. And I'm not talking about the antidote to the virus. We're not there yet, right? I'm talking about the antidote for your business, the cure for your customers that can help them during these times to cope, to get, to get something from this time instead of just getting through it. How are you helping people to get something from this time? There are people on this call whose businesses are growing. They're growing by leaps and bounds. Why? Because they're offering additional service. They understand that service is the antidote and that service is delivered right here through objective number three. You see it on the screen through awareness, awareness. You see, awareness is the antidote to don't know. What can you do today to make people aware of the service you provide, the hours that you're open, what you're doing additionally to, to make a difference. I'm not suggesting you open up on Sunday unless that's part of your business plan, but I am suggesting that access is the key to your growth. And if people aren't aware, don't know, is still a monster that your business is facing. Every customer today is a potential referral. You know, the, one of the biggest challenges that people are facing is, is to meet their printing needs because they, they don't have options like they did when they were in the office. And, and I know printing may not be where you lead. I know it's a high margin business, but it might not be where you start off. But could it be a place for referrals? I just, I just wonder. And, and I wonder if your neighbors know you. I wonder how your, your working folks, whether it's in an industrial park or, or in a, a retail a strip mall, whatever your location may be, do your neighbors know you? Have, have you considered looking into some sort of joint partnership? And, and how can you turn commercial customers into your sales force? The answer is awareness. In my business, I work primarily via referrals. So you know what I do? I give every one of my coaching clients a gift. I give them the ability to refer someone to me and I do a coaching session at, at no charge and there's no sales pitch. It's an opportunity to look in the direction of service. Now, there's no way to understand if my coaching services fit unless someone experiences it. There's no way that people are going to know what you have to offer unless they can experience it. What can you do to create that experience and then empower your current customers to give that to someone else? I'm not suggesting that you turn your business into a gift or start running a nonprofit. That's not what Chris is saying, but I am saying 
that your service is a gift. And if you're looking for more referrals, especially on the commercial side, you can look in the direction of turning customers towards your solution by offering them a gift. And maybe it's as simple as a discount. Maybe it's as simple as just making them more aware. Maybe it's as simple as just calling your commercial customers or maybe even your retail customers and saying, who do you know? Who do you know? Or what could you say about us in a review on Google or Yelp? What could you share? And asking people who you've turned into fans to be bold enough to step forward. And also make sure that your information is updated. I know the folks in San Diego work on that for you, but make sure that people know what your hours are. And if you've got something innovative to offer, if you're offering masks, for example, or something that, that might be out of the box, make sure that people know about that and that you get the word out. You see, and here we come back to a, a prettier version of what we did on the whiteboard earlier. When you think about your greatest strengths, you think about your method of delivery, and you think about how your customer is better off. Well, you see it right here. Your greatest strength is your ability to adapt. If you're here, you're running your business, you've adapted. You've adapted to the most difficult time in the history of American business. Unprecedented, never been faced before. Very challenging, very difficult. And guess what? You're still here and so am I. And we're looking at 2020 and we're saying, is that all you've got? And I'm not asking for another punch in the face, but I'm saying we've got more to offer. You do and I do. We're not done yet. And that means that our method of delivery is via awareness. We got to make people aware of how you are adopting, adapting, excuse me, adopting, adapting. Sorry. Sorry about that. Sometimes I slip up how you are adapting. And then finally, when you think about how your customer is better off, they're better off because of access, because they have access to you. And that access well, starts with your smile, but it really starts with your service. The service that looks in the direction of not just how to do something, but making sure that people know that you want to. And the folks who are on your team, that they come in with a smile, that they, they see things in a, in a new way, and they bring your strengths to life. That's my hope for you today, is that you see that knowing how to do something is important. But when you, when you consider that the thing that makes any tool useful, like the tools that we've talked about today, it's really in the way that you use it. That's right, I just quoted from your third favorite Eric Clapton song. It's in the way that you use it, am I right? So the tools that we've talked about, we've talked about adaptability, awareness, and access. How are you going to use these ideas in new ways to bring your strengths to life and help create the growth that your business deserves and your customers crave? I wanna thank you for sticking with me and watching and, and sharing your ideas and your thoughts. Everyone who's participated from the West Coast to Florida, all across this great country, I appreciate you and I appreciate your perspective and I hope the perspective that I've shared has made a difference for you. Now, go out there and make a difference for your customers. That concludes my prepared remarks for our conversation today. And Aaron, if it's okay, I'll turn it back over to you to have the last word. Thank you, Chris. That was, that was great presentation. I liked the last slide the best, personally. I thought that was a really good wrap up. And I also really liked the, there's no quarantine on good ideas. That was a great little gem. <laughs> Thank you everyone for attending. Um, like Chris mentioned, we will get a video out um, on this recorded meeting. So if you want to come back and, you know, write down some of the things that were in the presentation um, and everyone else who wasn't here gets to see it. Um, we really appreciate you guys uh, attending the quick half an hour session. <laughs>